Hi, I'm Fabio Ponzio. I'm a unit manager at StressHead, and I will talk about uh, structural strengthening with pre-stressed CFRP strips. All right, so I will talk about uh, structural strengthening with post-tension CF CFRP strips. Just a couple of words to the company itself. So the uh, company name is StressHead. We are based in Switzerland. The company was founded in 1999. We are active nationally and international as well. And one of our strongest partners is SICA itself. And that's why we have the opportunity to be here, part of this roadshow as well. So we look at uh, more than 50 years of experience with this, uh, with this carbo stress system. We have executed more than 60 projects national and uh, international. So we are talking about bridges, buildings, earthquake strengthening and uh, many other things. Regarding to today's presentation, we will look at the system itself, its characteristics and the how to install it, the application and some very simple design example, what kind of effect we can achieve and at the end some case studies, bridge strengthening, industrial and high-rise buildings and various other applications. <coughs> so the system looks basically like this. On the left side you have a, a life tensioning anchor and on the right side a fixed anchor. This is just one of our standard anchor, the, we call it stand type 3. Um, just another perspective here you see it's drilled into the structure. It's basically just a steel pin, which has a diameter of 121 millimeters and a depth of 150. We have done some tests. So if you have a certain quality of concrete and a certain amount of reinforcement, you can use those standard types. If the concrete is uh, the grade is it's not uh, as good as uh, in the tests, so you have to adapt the pin itself. This is just uh, a picture of the fixed anchor side, how it's embedded into the structure. So you have to chip a little bit away on the back side for the stress head itself. On the other side, the life anchor looks like this here. So you're jacking the whole system from behind with the hydraulic cylinder. So basically you're just pulling back this, uh, this rod and uh, fixing it with, with those uh, knots here. This is how it looks like after tensioning. Regarding the material, it's, uh, this is how the stress head looks like. The diameter is 8 centimeter. Oh, sorry. It's uh, 11 centimeters long. And we use a standard Sika plate S626. It's uh, 60 millimeters wide and 2.6 millimeters thick, so it's quite thicker as a normal bonded plate. So we'll just pass it to you. Regarding the characteristics, so we, we pre-stress it up to 200 kilonewtons. We guarantee a force of 300 kilonewton. The system or the tendon itself can be tested at the factory itself. So what we normally do, we just test it pre-stressing force plus 10%. So the post-tensioning stress at 220 kilonewtons is 1,410 newton per square millimeters, and the tensile, tensile strength is 2,800 newton per square millimeters, which is uh, more than 40 tons. So what's quite important as well, so you can see here, we just pre-stress the plate itself uh, for around 50%. This is just because it's, it's a brittle material. The post strain itself is at 220 kilonewton is 0.85 percent, <coughs> and the E modulus is 165,000 newton per square millimeter. Regarding the application itself, so you can install the, the system bonded or, or not bonded, so with uh, adhesive or without. So if you will uh, install it bonded, so you have to make the same surface preparation as shown by Mark and Neil. So then, of course, you need to install the anchors itself. 
preparing the tendon, uh, installing the, the stress heads on both ends, then uh, installing the, the adhesive if it's bonded, installing the steel parts here on the, on the lower side, installing the hydraulic cylinder itself and tensioning the system like that. Right. And then fixing everything, removing of all steel parts and, and that's it basically. Here just a couple of pictures how this can look like. Here uh, detection of reinforcement, again surface preparation if necessary if you make it bonded and uh, drilling and chipping. This is really uh, depends on what kind of anchor you are going to use. Injection, uh, installing of, of the anchor itself and injection. Installing the tendon, tensioning and protection. Protection we are talking about also fire protection or uh, uh, protection against mechanical impact as well. This is a very basic design example. So here we have a, just a slab which is 10 meter long, or the span is 10 meter, bottom reinforcement 12 every 15, top reinforcement 10 every 15. So the dead load origi originally was 5 kilonewton per meter. So the new increased life load is 3 kilonewton. So now the first part we will look at how it's uh, how you can strengthen it with the CFRP passive bonded system and how you can strengthen it with the carbo stress system. So if you just look at the maximum load per linear meter, so originally we had 5.7 kilonewton per meter, so you, you can increase it to 9.7 with the normal bonded one for this particular case and with the carbo stress up to 12.3 kilonewton per meter. If you have a look at the deflection at mid-span, so now here you can really see the difference. So originally the deflection would be 142 millimeters with the normal bonded 118 millimeters and with the pre-stressed solution 63 millimeters. So you can quite reduce the deflection. Then regarding the stress itself, so here of course originally you will uh, reach the, the yield platform and same with the normal bonded CFRP and with the carbon stress you can reduce the, the stress itself up to 166 uh, newton per square millimeter. So uh, if you have fatigue problems or crack problems, so re you can really reduce the, the stress. So regarding bridge strengthening, you can strengthen quite a lot of things. So you can strengthen shear of webs, longitudinal, transversal, uh, strengthening of decks on the upper side, inside the box theater, so pile caps, pier heads, so basically uh, many things are possible. Here we look at uh, one of our first projects back in Switzerland. It was a bridge built in 1957. It's a pre-stressed box theater bridge, which uh, the, the cable are located here in the webs on both sides. So the total length is 98.2 meters, wet is 11.1 .1 meter. So the problem here was that was there was a continuous crack along the bridge on the inside of the, of the deck located here and an insufficient transverse, transversal flexure strength due to the increased life load itself and uh, inadequate reinforcement cover on top of the deck. So the request of the bridge owner was to strengthen the, the, the deck itself in transversal direction for positive and negative moments and to prevent any further opening of the crack itself on the inside, again here in the middle. Solution was to pre-stress the, the deck from the inside with a carbon stress system every 1.2 meters and on the top side of the deck we use the CFRP strip every 60 centimeters. This is how, how it looked like on the, in the, in, on the inside. Uh, this is the right side, the life anchor. So you see here the, the plate is coming from this side, stress head is located here and you're 
pre-stressing the whole system from the backside. On the other side, there is just a standard type fixed anchor. Another project in Switzerland, this is a, a bridge which was built in 1969 uh, and 70s. It's also a pre-stressed box girder bridge. So same scenario, uh, pre-stressed, uh, the existing post-tensioning is here located in the web, these three webs. Uh, total length 377.5 meters, wet's quite similar, 11.05 meters. And the existing post-tensioning cables were connected in this construction joint mentioned here and they got some slippage over this, all these years and what happened, the, the you, you could see a crack on the lower part of the, the bridge itself, so the solution was to inject this crack and to overpress it with uh, totally 18 carbon stress systems, so we are talking about 4,000 kilonewtons. This is how it looked like here, this is the fixed anchor side and the uh, the life anchor side. So especially for this project we have developed this type of uh, anchors because it was quite difficult to introduce the force into this very thin slab. It was just uh, around 14 centimeters thick. Here are just a closer picture from the life anchor side. This is the cross section. You see here this, this thickness was only 14 centimeter. The plate is coming from this side, stress head located here, again tensioning from the back side. On the, the other here you can see how, how it was uh, stressed. On the other side the fixed anchor, again cross section, plate is coming from here, this side stress head located here, and uh, yeah, the rest is clear. <laughs> this is uh, another project in, in Qatar. So the total length is 2 times 35 meters and the width is 12.45 meters. So they had a problem as already mentioned by Mark. So a bridge, they, they crashed the bridge with an excavator so they didn't consider the, the loading height. And they damaged some existing PT cables here. They damaged uh, the whole concrete structure and, and reinforcement as well. So the solution was to, to install totally 16 carbon stress system from the inside and in order to introduce the force from, from this part slap into the web itself we installed some uh, C-cup wraps on the outside. So this whole application took around 8 to 9 days. So this was really quite a fast job because the bridge was closed and it had to be reopened as fast as possible. This is how it looked like on the inside. It's just a tensioning side and all the overlayered system. On the other side, the fixed anchor side, and from the outside, the, the installed seek of rep. Let's move on to industrial and high rise buildings. So you can strengthen quite uh, a lot of things uh, slabs, beams. So uh, earthquake strengthening, this is of course not really applicable here in the UK. Strengthening to due to, to changes, especially if it's a, a problem of deflection or serviceability. This is uh, just an example also back in Switzerland, a paper mill. So what actually happened, they changed their internal system, so they got bit wider rolls, paper rolls, and those rolls didn't fit between these two existing columns. So what we have done, we have drilled into the columns, shown here on the left and right side. We pre-stressed the, the, the beam itself. We casted the new columns on the outside and we just cut the existing columns. Another strengthening of a beam here you can see on the left side here the fixed anchor and this is another type of, of uh, life anchor so we drilled basically through the wall so you can see it here on the next sheet slide so this is uh, the rod going through the wall and this is the other side where you actually tension the, 
whole system. This is just uh, another application. I already mentioned it. This is uh, for earthquake strengthening back in Switzerland, in Basel, uh, longitudinal and shear in the basement itself. So this could be used theoretically also for uh, wind strengthening. Another uh, more, uh, yeah, a little bit special solution for, uh, for a silo. So you can see it actually here. And this is also a special anchor type which was developed just for this project. So the summary, it's uh, active strengthening, right? So it's a restriction of deformation of the structure. So it's not like the normal bonded uh, passive strips. Then it's a concentrated introduction of force. So it's a higher reinforcement force as with the normal bonded system. It's minimum interference into the structure. Then it's simple and fast to install. So we are talking about uh, once you install the, the whole steel parts, you can tension such a system within 15 minutes. Uh, limited corrosion behavior and excellent fatigue behavior as well. So thank you very much.